On July 7, 2018, besides helping to rescue efforts with power walls, location tracking and water pumping, Elon also tried to get hold of the cave divers to see if there was any way he could assist them with a possible backup plan. Rick Stanton, the leader of the rescue divers, in his book Aquanaut said that he welcomed the idea of Elon's help and because Rick and his partner John Volantin were both engineers, they were interested in what Elon and his team could come up with. Rick said, if anybody could have helped them, it was Elon Musk. Uh, some people think I'm an alien. <laughs> Not true. But John Volantin, longtime dive partner of Rick Stanton and co-leader of the Rescue Divers, in his book, 13 Lessons That Saved 13 Lives, John implied that Rick wasn't even familiar with Elon's work and had little interest in his reputation and achievements, adding that Rick was rather unimpressed with Elon Musk. What explorer is unfamiliar with the man who revolutionized the rocket industry in order to colonize Mars? According to John Volantin, who was familiar with Elon Musk, insisted that it would be foolish to turn down his assistance. John explained that Elon might come up with something, besides the great sausage plan. After all, Elon had the experience, the money and the engineering to do so. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, not bad. Uh, room for improvement. John added that Elon was only asking for some information that would not take long to provide. Nothing to lose. Rick then grumpy answered the phone and agreed with Elon to work on an escape pod. But before Elon could even obtain the important information he needed of the cave's dynamics, Rick just hung up on him and John was taken back by Rick's action. To be fair to John Volantin, Rick Stanton did not have a plan B and had absolutely no insurance whether his plan would have even worked. So why have not someone work on a backup plan? Especially when that person doesn't interfere with your work. Elon ignored Rick's grumpiness and started working with his engineers on an escape pod design that might be safe enough to try. And Sam Taylor, Elon's staff manager, created a group chat he named Thailand Ground Team for Elon's team who were sent to Thailand to gather information and the SpaceX engineers in Los Angeles who were constructing the escape pod. The SpaceX group chat log shows the progress of the construction. Elon, who had already asked Rick twice in an email and on the phone, urged Rick again for some pictures and videos of the most difficult sections inside the cave. But Rick had no visuals of the cave system because during the rescue, Rick and John made a rather odd decision, a pact not to film anything. Therefore, Rick told Elon to build a rescue capsule so that it tightly encloses a 15-year-old boy and ensured Elon that the mini submarine would fit through. Rick and John were one of the pathfinders and therefore the eyes of the rescue. Not filming inside the cave made little to no sense. Most of the divers, if not all of them, were unhappy with Rick and John's policy not to film anything for various reasons but mainly for their own safety. One of the rescue divers was Miko Pasi. If you had to do it again, what would you do different? Oh, good one. Uh, I definitely demand everybody in the, in the, in the operation would, would have a, like a GoPro or some kind of a recording device. This time we were, we, were, we were told not to have, not to take any pictures, any film during it, but that would have made everything planning and showing the rest of the team and, and the people outside and the commanding and the upper higher levels what actually how it looks and where we what we are fighting against and and uh with even within the team we would know much better how many tanks in in each chamber and how does the chamber number six look from from chamber number five because they all look the same mm. and and we didn't ha i mean just and and also also for liability uh, and and learning from the or these ordeals if you could have a camera <laughs> uh, on your on your set yeah. to film you could you could easily show that okay i didn't I, I did that mistake or or i didn't do that or here we could i mean it would just make sense to sense to have those uh recording devices on your on your in every every rescue actually yeah but rick and john weren't the only pathfinders doing the rescue 
The Thai Navy SEALs and Ben Remnants provided the SpaceX engineers with visuals and information of some of the most complex parts of the cave. Ben Remnants, besides being an expert cave diver, is also a board-certified hyperbaric technologist and suggested to the SpaceX team that the submarine would need a ventilation system and an acrylic window to check on the passenger. Once the design was in place, Elon contacted Rick again to inform him that he was going to work on a resistant aluminium tube and a dry rubber cocoon, to which Rick replied to go with the aluminium pod, because rigid is better and insisted of oxygen as a breathing gas instead of air. Ben Remnants and Bill Stone, a engineer, caver and explorer known for exploring deep caves, also agreed with Rick's request to build a mini submarine rigid. Rigid was better. Elon's primary path, based on Rick Stanton's input, would be a tiny kit-sized submarine, light enough to be carried by two divers, Big enough for a 15 year old boy to fit in, but small enough to get through the cave's narrow gaps and extremely robust. And in addition, Elon tweeted his admiration for the courage of the children and the divers. Elon got all this good feedback from John Volantin, Rick Stanton, Ben Remnants and Bill Stone on the design of the escape pod. And this puts the myth aside that Elon just randomly built a mini submarine for the rescue. Next, was the mini submarine built to Rick Stanton's expectations or did he just dismiss the rescue pod? 